Let's get physical, it's Jordan here back again with this week's update on all the physical releases coming to the Switch, where in week 3 of August, August 17th until the 21st, retail, low print and imports, plus our community spotlight where you show off your pickups and potentially win a physical Switch game, plus you're going to find out the winner of Snooker 19 signed by absolute legends, no messing about with those words there, Ronnie O'Sullivan and Neil Robertson, so stay tuned. Let's get on with it. PGA Tour 2K21 is releasing this week. I tell you what guys, as much as it's well deserving to dunk on 2K games, you can't pretend that it's not welcoming to see a proper golf simulation on the Switch. We've got arcade mini golf types for days, but proper golf? Finally. Let's just hope the microtransactions aren't ludicrous in this one. We all know how 2K games can be when it comes to those. And PGA Tour is Brent McLean and Ganicus's pick of the week. Alcana 4 Rhythms Across the Blue is the latest visual novel from PQ, who generally put out some decent ones. We should have a review out for this one coming at some point if it's not out already. One of our viewers, Mirin, who is a much bigger fan of visual novels than myself or the other lads, is going to be writing this one, so be sure to click that bell notification if you're interested in seeing what this one is all about. There's a limited edition version which comes with a 100 page art book, kind of like their day one editions. House Flipper is good for release this week in Europe, I believe. Hard to know for sure, with merge games, they keep their cards close to their chest at times. Anyways, this is a very unique game where you buy rundown houses, do them up all by your own hands, and then sell them for a profit. Looking at the trailer, you'd think that this kind of game could go horribly wrong. I'm getting cheap Steam cash grab nightmares, but I think the publisher gives me much more confidence. There's also a signature edition to grab too. Guns of Mercy is the latest game from Pixel Heart. This is a primarily co-op arcade shooter, although it is perfectly at home in solo mode. This looks proper bright and colourful, and the gameplay looks fairly simple. It may have that arcadey addictiveness that I often crave as I've matured as a person. And by that, I mean I'm old with a family and I ain't got time for massive RPGs, so fun arcade burst games like this are right on my street these days. Like usual, there's a European cover art, which can be bought from online retailers, plus just for Games' website. The US version is being handled by VGNY with its own special cover. Plus, there is a Japanese cover version too, which is being sold on Pixel Heart's very own store, plus PlayAsia. If you want that one, there are links below. Pinstripe is supposedly releasing physically this week. It's been delayed a couple of times so far, so take this one with a pinch of salt. Anyways, this is an atmospheric puzzle platformer, almost surreal in its nature. I enjoyed it for what it was in my review, so much so that I completed it twice. Although it is short, interestingly this is getting a physical release in Japan, however, it's also being bundled with a second game, Neversong. Why the European version is standalone I have no idea. If you want more bang for your buck, import the Japanese physical when it arrives shortly, and I do believe that neither are releasing physically in the US, but I could be wrong about that one. If you'd prefer the double pack with the nice little collectibles inside, then there will be import links down below for that. Dane Wilkinson has chosen Pinstripe as his pick of the week. A quick note to Carla Cross Malice Unlimited, which is getting its European release this week. And just an update on my lack of knowledge, a few of you chimed in on my ignorance to let me know that this is a fan CD, which means it stars all the same people, but is full of like side stories and epilogues and whatnot. None of the original game is present in this one, so it's not an updated version, it's very separate, but you'll definitely need to play the original game first before this one. Alright, let's jump into the low print releases. Alert, we have a new low print company on the horizon. Why not? We've already got about 12 dozen of them. Premium Edition Games have announced their first three titles with a pre-order open for the first game in their lineup, the pretty decent Super Blood Hockey. I remember Juan reviewed this for the channel, so check out that for his thoughts on the matter. You can pre-order this now, as it was a bit of a surprise announcement mid last week. These premium editions come with their own sleeve, unique card and sticker. What do you guys think? I'm curious if they're going to hit the minimum 5,000 required by Nintendo of America. Uh, they said that they plan to have their next releases in hand rather than pre-order, so I guess this is designed to, you know, get a bit of capital to allow that. Head to premiumeditiongames.com if you fancy this. Personally, uh, I think I'll pass. I'm not a fan of that artwork.
Limited Run have another distribution title. I swear they might as well change their name to GameStop. No less thanks to helping a release that's already been out physically for a year. Why Among the Sleep needed another physical release on the Switch, this time aided by Limited Run Games, is anyone's guess. But yeah, this kind of feels like they've reached a new low in the curation of what they're offering. I know it's not part of their main line of releases, but you know, come on, you're making it so easy for me to complain about you. Anyways, there is a four week pre-order open from the 18th. Let's jump into the imports this week. Just remember that if any take your fancy and you'd like to import them for yourself, then there are import links below in the description and the pinned comment. It helps support this little series, especially uh, it wouldn't be what it is today without you guys. So thank you ever so much for your support in using our links, plus our coupon code, which can net you 5% off all your physical orders. So when you're checking out, don't forget to input the code SWITCHWATCHTV, that's all one word, SWITCHWATCHTV, to get 5% off your order. Don't forget to use our links though, at least for one of the items that you're buying. PlayAsia and East Asia Soft have announced their latest Switch physical exclusive collaboration. This time they're veering back towards the good old shmup territory with the game that I've been anticipating for a good while. Power Roomy Definitive Edition. A tough as nail shmup that requires a nice bit of thinking but still has that satisfying destroy everything that moves feel that we all love in the genre. As the Definitive Edition, this contains all the updates and patches that came to the digital release, including a silky smooth 60 frames per second, which really upped the experience. Shmup fans will definitely need this in their collection, whether it's the Standard Edition or the Collector's Edition. I like how they tend to keep these things simple. Game, certificate, soundtrack and manual, that's all I need. As usual, sales are going live on Thursday, 11pm Hong Kong time, which is 4pm in the UK, 5pm in places like Germany, 10am New York, 8am LA. If you're going to order like me, then please come back to this video around that time to use our links in the description, which will help support us massively. What a legendary offering we have from Nussoft and Mastiff Games. In Asia, we have the incredible looking Fight Crab. Yes, this crustacean combat game looks right up my alley with just how ridiculous it is. And if you know me, the more ridiculous, the better. Each crustacean species has their own style of fighting, and there are plenty of hilarious weapons to duke it out with. Plus, just look at that damn cover art. Frame it, stick it on the wall in the Louvre, and give the artist a knighthood. This is an Asian exclusive physical release with no Western release planned for the time being, according to the publisher. The best thing is that it does have English. Oh yeah, baby, I'm definitely importing this bad boy. God of Resin has chosen the correct answer and gone with Fight Crab as his pick of the week. Cupid Parasite is an oddly titled visual novel from Idea Factory. There's a standard edition as well as a collector's edition which nets you a booklet and drama CD. There is no English as you'd expect, maybe someday in the future. Alright, let's jump into the Let's Get Physical Community Spotlight where you show off your pickups. If you're featured, then at the end of the month you'll be in the draw to win a physical Switch game. Still, I don't know, I haven't looked, I have not had the time, I've been so busy. But you will get something at the end of the month. It will be something, something hopefully half decent. <clears throat> Alright, firstly me, I've been waiting quite a long time for Ace Angler to arrive in English, and it did arrive a few weeks ago, it's just been in my backlog of stuff to talk about. And boy do I have stuff to talk about. Anyways, this physical version of Ace Angler is actually a little bit disappointing. Yes, the box art is in English, but the cartridge is just the Japanese one. If you actually want to play in English, you must download a 1GB patch, which is not the end of the world, but you know, it's not ideal either. While I'm not 100% sure, it may also mean that the Japanese version of the physical, which came out ages ago, may have English now via a patch, although I don't have it to try for sure. Either way, still nice to have a good old English box. This game is quite a lot of fun if you're into arcade types of stuff. It plays a lot to my weaknesses when it comes to collecting things in games, plus I have a big affinity for marine animals, so this is right in my alley. Can't wait to spend more time with this one. If you want this one for yourself, like me, then I'll put links below for the English box version in the description and pinned comment. Alright you lot, Craig Morgan sent in a couple of picks this week including One Piece Pirate Warriors, plus he won a competition from Signature Edition Games, netting the excellent edition of Streets of Rage 4, you lucky so and so. Ying sent in a few pictures including some Ghostbuster goodness, as well as some newer titles in Ark of Alchemist and the very recent Collar X Cross Whatever Malice Unlimited. 
Derek Jenkins went a bit import loopy. Many thanks for using our links and codes as always. He got in some great stuff in here including the very obscure Rolling Sky Collection and the collector's edition of the Darkly RPG Mistover. James Church also went into imports this week with a nice cheeky JRPG collection, Volume 1 from Kemco, plus one of the more obscure, the Japanese Rail Sim. It does have English, it is supposed to be released in Europe by Dispatch Games, but we all know how much of a cursed ground they have become these days. Streaming on the corner showed off these very four nice games, including Ghost 1.0, it's a cool import that's not talked about much, from PlayAsia as an exclusive, not sure if they've sold out already for the standard edition, I haven't checked in a while. Visipon got in two Japanese RPGs, I don't get Neptunia, but that cover art looks pretty cool. Atelier Riser is the star of the show though, such a good game, highly recommended by myself. She also got in the Cat Quest double pack, so many people with this one. Jonathan Agnew showed off all his culture in one photo with some top tier releases. Uh, it's pretty rare to see that collector's edition of Dead or Alive Extreme 3. Uh, I would not recommend the game, but it's a nice one to have for the collection. Santa Tartaruga got in Black Sad, which had all the potential to be a fantastic game on the Switch. Unfortunately, it suffers from terrible performance issues. It really brings it down. Fluttershout made me jealous with the arrival of Skullgirls from Skybound. Wish I could find this in China, really like the interior artwork. Punky Dooster did what he does best, letting us take a look at some of his tasty cartridges. I am always a bit befuddled as to why some cartridges have age ratings and others don't. Even Super Rare games are like inconsistent as can be seen here. Ron sent in this picture of three games. Now it's my 30th birthday coming up in October and on my potential gift list right there in the middle is the princess guide. I have no idea what's drawing me to this game but for some reason I really want it in my collection. Ike sent in this picture of their fine and complete Steam World collection, at least of the ones available on the Nintendo Switch. Still missing the first game in the series, the DSi exclusive original game, Tower Defense. Chris from Kali sent in some interesting games, the ever popular Ringo Ishikawa plus that princess game that I've forgotten the name of and Nurse Love Obsession distributed by Limited Run. Matt Doobie showed off some of his favourite collector's editions including one of mine, The Golf Story from B-Side Games in Japan. He even opened them for us to have a little peek inside. Art Phoenix Assorted showed off this magnificent collection of Mega Man, or should I say Rockman games on the Switch, mostly thanks to the 5-in-1 box set that released in Japan late last year. Wonderful. Joseph Wharton Walker showed off two games including Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, a fantastic little throwback game to something like Castlevania 3. To think that this was mostly like a bonus companion game to Ritual of the Night is just mind-blowing. Many people consider this one the better one. Marty Mar got in this massive haul recently with some great looking stuff including the recent Japanese release of the Coma Double Cut, two games in one with English exclusive to Japan and Asia. They also got in Steam World from Super Rare. Raven Knight got in two great games, Xenoblade 2 the expansion as well as Owl Boy, a much celebrated indie game with great pixel art. Arthur Van Horsen showed off his new fishing obsession with the English physical of Ace Angler. He even got the proper hefty controller to go with it. Adamski got in a nice haul with a special shout out to Kamiko from B-Side Games in Japan. Absolutely stunning physical from over there. My personal copy should be arriving any day now and I can't wait. Park Ranger got in one of Super Rare Games' latest releases, Old School Musical. The name does it no favours, but it's supposedly pretty good, uh, well it looks it at least. Robert C got in the superb looking Ringo Ishikawa, the collector's edition with that replica Super Nintendo cartridge. Sadly it's not the real thing of course, but it still looks awesome. JP also sent in a picture of the completed Switch collection of the Steam World stuff, obviously still missing the first game in the series. I wonder if they'd ever bring that to the Switch. Cameron Duncan sent in a very obscure title in another site. I know literally nothing about this game aside that it's an obscure physical release. Any thoughts on if it's good or not? Do let me know. Casey Carter sent in an eye dazzler. However, they helped me out to focus on the Japanese physical of Stardew Valley, which was one of the more sought after imports of all, right up there with Bayonetta 1. Uh, I can see it coming down a lot these days thanks to the impending physical in the West, although 
if I'm being honest, I'm very much not a fan of the artwork that they're going for with the Western release. It kind of looks like one of my daughter's early learning books for animals. Uh, yeah, that's kind of insulting, I know. But, you know, just my thoughts. The Japanese cover is just so much better. I love it when they use, like, in-game graphics for the artwork. I think that's why I love Golf Story so much from Japan. Tim sent in some great low print releases, including one that's not seen often at all, Pixel Junk Monsters 2, a pretty legendary release considering it took them an absolute age to send this one out. The interestingly named Horse Flesh Flavored Ice Cream, nice name, sent in this nice little picture of some cartridges. Mextermination Force is a classic in my opinion. Lord Vapor got in the great shmup collection, plus Trials Rising for very, very cheap. I've seen it for cheap here in China too. Uh, I almost bought it for like 10 bucks, but I couldn't find another game that I wanted to ease the postage cost. H and F sent in a couple of pictures of the collector's editions to Carla X Malice Unlimited from Axis Online Store. The soundtrack includes music from both games, which is a nice touch. Rich Bergen got in these games, some recent ones in Scully, nice to see that. But Deponia is a game that we don't see often here at all. I have no idea what it's all about, but you know, it's nice to see something obscure. Our executive producer, Brent McLean, sent in this one showing some nice games. In fact, I recently ordered Destiny Connect myself. I own it digitally already, but NIS Europe's website had it for like £11, and I thought I'd buy it and send it to my mom's house for safekeeping. Pacer sent in some fantastic import purchases, including that collector's edition of Dead or Alive once again, plus some other great ones like Okami and Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon. Highly approved. Our executive producer, God of Resin, got in some fun physicals, the elusive North American release of Disaster Report, as well as a physical that's rarely seen in these areas, ATV Drift and Tricks. Not sure of the quality, but it's nice to see something that I don't often see. Pretty With Horns got in the Trine Collection, four games in one. Shame about the download, but it is what it is. At least you get that fantastic looking map to go with it. Neverbirth got in some fantastic looking games, including the NIS Collector's Editions that they've been hunting down. This time for Princess Guide and Langrissa, I'm very jealous. Ultra Egg got in these great games, and the import of Romance in Saga 3 is the star of the show for me, even though I really enjoy all the games that I've showed here. Andy Craddock got his fishing on too, with nice showing of Ace Angler, the English physical, with accessory. But he also wanted to give a nice comparison to the days of old, when this kind of thing really kicked off with the Dreamcast fishing controller. Fantastic, those were the days, truly. Spawn 7 showed off these games, including the great limited edition of Void Terrarium, plus a fairly recent physical in The Persistence. Anaheim Rookie was very gracious enough to use our affiliate links and coupon code in order to get this tasty haul with some nice top class importing. I highly recommend each and every one of these physicals if you're into the genre. So much variety, a metroidvania, dungeon crawler, JRPGs and a visual novel. Jim Wiley got in these recent games including some super rare goodness as well as Super Kane Magic Zero which is a very obscure import, one that I missed from a list or two. Looks very funky indeed. And to end this week's show, we have Nathan Russell, a new subscriber who sent in an eye dazzler. Plus, used our link and code for one of the best imports that money can buy. Final Fantasy X and X Part II, where both games are on the cartridge in English. No download required, unlike the Western version. Many thanks to Russell. All right, thanks to all of you, ladies and gents. It's always fantastic to see what you've got. Please send me your pictures over at Twitter at so what about Game. You can DM me so I can keep track of it, or you can tag me in a post and use the hashtag Let's Get Physical, and I'll give you a nice little retweet. Also, you can email it into us at contactors at switchwatch.co.uk. Use that email. Please don't use the form on our website because it goes to the, the website's email address. We have separate emails, okay? And just make sure you start the email title with Community Spotlight so I don't miss it. Plus, we have a Discord, which is a nice way for us to have a chat with you, and you can send your pictures over there in the submission section. Discord server link is below. All right, that just means there's only one more thing that we need to do this week. We need to give away Snooker 19 signed, signed by Ronnie O'Sullivan and Neil Robertson. Plus, two runners up can win download codes for the game. First, let's start with the two runners up. Going by names on Twitter, the runners up are Matt Richards and Craig Keith. Congratulations, I'll message you about which regions that you'd like for a code. But now, the first prize winner goes to... Rebecca Khan! Or Khan. Khan Khan? I don't know. But anyways, congratulations, Rebecca. We'll sort something out over on Twitter for you. 
Thank you all for joining in. Thank you to Ripstone Games for providing this opportunity. Uh, and we hope we can do more giveaways like this in the future. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can keep up to date with it all. And follow me on Twitter. All right, guys, my voice is absolutely shattered right now. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of New Physicals. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumo, and Gannicus, and all the others who have joined our memberships. We really appreciate you guys. Thank you for supporting us like you do. And if you're watching right here, right now, watching all the way here, you are amazing. The longer you watch, the more it helps the series, really. Check out last week's episode, in case you missed it. We'll see you guys over there. Take care.